right here in the studio today we have a whole b- gamut of djs what's what's the collective term for t- for djs I don't know really a what gobble, it is. You know, or a, gob, a gobble of DJs. A gobble. <laughs> I'm talking about speech. <laughs> talking about speech. The thing is, you get a pride of lions, don't you? You get, you get like a, a parliament of owls. Yeah. An ego. An, e- an, an ego of DJs. There you go. Uh, so there's uh, myself, Barry Upton. You've got uh, Mr. Barry Wilmore here. Let's have him a round of applause. Hey. Because he, he is a weekend soul DJ and a uh, specialist in northern soul as well. Well, no, yes, so, soul generally, but uh, yeah. nor- northern features very heavily in the show. It yeah. does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, you've been doing this uh, show at the weekend, and uh, just tell us a little bit about it, what, what it is that you feature. Right, well, it's, it's called This Old Soul of Mine. Yeah. Um, which is a sort of a follow-on from um, my um, Facebook page, which has got uh, over seven and a half thousand followers. Just right. That a plug. Yeah. Facebook.com forward slash this all soul of mine dot com. Yeah. Um, and, and basically, how I describe it, it's um, a show that. that um, features primarily northern soul but also crossover soul uh crossover being the soul music that was coming out of uh, the states in the late 60s early 70s yeah. when the recording techniques were starting to improve yeah. but before uh, what became known as modern soul where the studios mo- moved to la and um you, you got the modern soul from the late 70s and up until now what is it about that music that makes it so special um, well, it's just what moves me and a, and a, and a whole um, generation of people. Hmm. You know, it, it's the music that you first... You grew up with it. Well, it's the, a, you know, when I was about 16, 15 or 16, um, you know, I'm obviously, you know, at 12, 13, 14, I was into the chart music. Uh, I think the reason that I got into... Uh, it, it wasn't called Northern Soul at that time, it was just called Soul Music, hmm. was that the the clubs that played soul music, the, 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 the girls were better looking. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. And, and more and more fashionable. That would do it, wouldn't it? Yeah, and it, it was the whole, it was the whole gamut. It came out of the mod scene, yeah, um, the soul music scene, and it became called Northern Soul. Got, got my mod shirt. On that <laughs> yeah. Became called Northern Soul uh, in the late sixties when the the, the 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 soul music that was being played in in in, in the southern parts of the, uh, of England, the southeast, I should say, mm. Southampton and Portsmouth was very much into the what, what became known as Northern Soul, mm. um, but. There was a guy that had a record shop in in London called Dave Godin. Right. And he would get these people coming down from the north, uh, made football supporters, come into his shop and ask him for um, their (laughs) type of soul music. And he told his staff to to save wasting time. Mm. If they come down from the north, don't tell them what's in the Billboard 100 soul charts. Tell them, play them the soul music they like. Soul from the north, northern Northern soul. Northern soul. So they have like a, a, a section... Put, a, put aside for that kind of music that's right and that's how he got the name northern soul so yeah a lot of people think oh it came from the north but of course it didn't did it? it was just it was just the interest that came from well the it, north. it really started like everything else does in 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 london i mean the flamingo club in london was mm. where rod stewart used to frequent yeah. as a mod yeah because uh, they were all influenced by that soul music weren't they that's right mm. but um as, as i said you know that you, you had the flamingo in london you had the whiskey in birmingham you had the twisted wheel in manchester you had the mojo in sheffield yeah. and the, the clubs in the south gradually moved on to what I said, f- more, more funk songs. New song. release and co- commercial, they yeah. sort of follow whatever was new and contemporary yeah. at the time. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the well, north still liked the, the two clubs, beats of the bar, um, the Motown the north, style. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, really st- stuck with the, w- with the drive of the music they were, they were listening to already then and started to yeah. sort of look deeper. Yeah. So essentially they started to look back even then yeah. and look deeper into that genre mm. rather than consistently just play whatever was being offered to them as mm. a new release record. Because like uh, the way I look at it, Northern Soul is, is like the almost like the indie records that didn't quite make the charts but it was the, that Motown sound wasn't yeah. it it all came from that Motown sound it, it did and, and, and what, that from Detroit and, mm. and basically what um, was happening there were so many independent record labels in Detroit the bands were you know uh, making uh, producing records in the garage mm. and A fantastic record absolutely well. brilliant but you know you, you can imagine that you know all those st- uh, labels you know mm. hundreds of labels sending into people like you yeah, on yeah. On the, on the playlist yeah. you've got a pile of records like yeah. this uh, m- m- sometimes there's only four or five that have been um, pressed that's right and, yeah. and de- de- DJ demo coppers and a lot just got missed mm. you know and, and there's it, only it, so much room in a chart 
yeah. you know, at the end yeah. of the day. So if, you, yeah. if you've got 20 records in a chart, which a DJ's going to play, mm. what happens to the other 500 that's literally come out that yeah. week? And the great thing is, which uh, you've you shown, uh, or has been shown around here in Patia at the, uh, the Northern Soul parties that they've had, yeah. is the strength of the, of the writing, the songwriting. Yeah, yeah, well, you had some great. You know, the students are fantastic, aren't yeah, they? Well, you've you got people that did, that that weren't uh, particularly well known that didn't uh, become famous, unlike people like Smokey Robertson. You had Steve Mancher, who wrote some great Clyde tracks. Wilson, yeah, his real name, yeah. Yeah, who yeah. you know, the, the, and Frank Wilson, yeah. um, who became a, a Motown writer and producer. Come on, get up, get out, and start grooving, Choosing around to the sound of music. Yeah. What's wrong with me, baby? <laughs> I'm not the microphone there. Oh, we're having a little bit of a groove around to that song. That was uh, uh, the invitations and what's wrong with my baby? That's with a, me, baby. With me, baby. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me, baby? <laughs> that's what, that's what I'm, just, I'm trying to say it in a northern accent. Lovely. <laughs> now that's one of your favourites, isn't it, Barry? Yeah, it's the, it's, it's, it's the first um, soul song that really um, made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end as a 16-year-old. Yeah. You know, in 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 a club where everybody was, you know, uh, dressed in mod fashion. The women were gorgeous. <laughs> you know, and uh, the music was yeah, fantastic. This is the scene for me. Yeah, and uh, th that's the one that's always stayed with me. There are better soul records, of course, but that if I if I had to choose my number one in terms of uh, what it's what, you know what a record means to me, that's yeah. the one. That's oh. the one I want to go be buried uh, to. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, uh, things like that they do. I mean, music is the soundtrack to your life, isn't it? Yeah, and it, yeah. it brings back all those kind of memories, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, what's great about that uh, that song is that it's got that typical motor feel isn't it it's lovely swing beat you know yeah it was written by two white guys actually uh, Linda Ranzel Danny Linzer and Sandy Rand or the other way around Randell who, who, yeah, yeah, who wrote yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the the oh. Breaking down the walls at the heart. Breaking down the walls at the heart. Breaking down the walls at the heart. Breaking down the They, 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 they wrote a lot of songs I in love that, that, song. that period. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. What great writers. Fantastic stuff. What about you, Guy? What's your uh, favourite record of all time? You oh, know, song oh, record. That's on the spot, is that, Barry? Yeah. Um, uh, probably something I heard much later, actually. All time favourites. I would probably put something like The Mellow Souls, We Can Make It, uh, mm. Cecil Washington, I Don't Like to Lose. An older one would be Morris Chestnut, Too Down Soulful. But all these things, the beauty of Northern Soul is, for me saying that now, by the time we leave here, I could contradict <laughs> myself totally. Yeah, yeah that's and, true. You know, and it is yeah. what you hear at the time. Oh, this is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, you, you, you're right when you say about it about being the story of your life. Yeah. You know, because it is, and that, and that buzz you get out of hearing something mm. uh, it's, it's, it's something that's brand new to you yeah. but also something which is totally old and common as muck kind of thing you'll hear it and it's got what a fantastic <laughs> record <laughs> I've not heard the invitations I think yeah. it is I was never mad on it but yeah. when we put it on then I was thinking I can remember exactly why I liked it when I was 11 exactly <laughs> you know it's, uh, the, 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 the record the guy first mentioned the Mellow Souls I mean that is rare as Hen's Teeth. I was going to say Rocking Horse Boot, yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. but um, absolutely rare. And there's a there's a there's a great clip. You know the clip where you've got uh, Hitler in the bunker. You know um, you've got different stories. You mm. know da, da. this. There's a clip there about the Mellow Souls be, um, on the, YouTube, the, the, yeah. finding another five thousand, and so the value of it went down from about what. 10,000 quid? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. To nothing. And Hitler, go, one. Hitler yeah. had just bought it. Yeah, yeah. There <laughs> yeah. was something magical, wasn't there, in those days? I mean, just generally about vinyl, wasn't there? About oh, pieces, yes. pieces yeah. of vinyl. And we used to uh, treasure them, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. There's no, there's nothing like it. I mean, so CDs w wasn't a bad medium. Mm. And, you know, with M you know, MP3, uh, you know, today, etc. Um, but to actually pick up a, um, a piece of vinyl mm. with the original label, yeah. uh, with all, you know, the details. Tells it, you know, Do you not find that the, the depth you get of sound? I'm, I'm not talking... I mean, there's something... Well, you do Just get the chunky. scratches as well, but yeah. that's oh, something that's part of it. Yeah. There's something beyond the sound which you get. Yeah. You sort of get that gap uh, of which, which gives it some depth. Mm. I'm not saying bass, but there's something mm. there which you don't really get off a CD. Yeah. A, CD a CD seems to be much more clinical, flat sound. Yeah. You, but, but with vinyl, you get something there, and there's something behind it. Yeah. There's, 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 there's that darkness behind yeah. it as yeah. well, which, which which the sound seems to fill You're in a different way. You're getting so turned on. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> I always remember when I was a kid, 
kid looking at, at, at vinyl and thinking one day I would just love to have my name in the middle of a record like that you know and uh, of course it happened loads and loads of times uh, after that but that, that was the magic of it I did but they were all fakes bootlegs bootlegs now um the scene today here in Patia, I mean, there's been uh, some Northern Soul parties and uh, now we've got your show yeah. on Saturdays. So people have access to this music well, now. Well, uh, Patia Soul Club, mm. uh, as they call, were, were formed about two years ago by uh, Ever Johnson, who you know yep. well, and Earl yep. Brown. Yep. Um, I was the the first DJ at the first event and DJed at several of them mm. and have attended virtually all of them. The thing I find about these events as well is that um, uh, the music really creates such a great atmosphere. Uh, and and by myself, I, you know, I walk into a nightclub, it's a very stale kind of atmosphere for me sometimes, and it's just the same old music. But that kind of music, you see everybody has big grins and smiles on their faces. And get up and dance, you know, yeah. Yeah, by themselves. Anybody can dance to <laughs> yeah. this. That's the great thing about Northern Soul, yeah. is that guys could dance by themselves. That's right. Yeah. Abs absolutely. Yeah. Did you do it? Yeah, of course I did, yeah. <laughs> from being a very, very Did you young have the age. flares? Uh, no, parallels, mate. Parallels. Oh. Parallels. <laughs> they, uh, they, they couldn't flare out. They had to drop parallel. Oh, right. If they went out like that, they were bell-bottom. Yeah. 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 So, uh, See, I was a bit of a hippie yeah. in those days. I used to have the, I used to have the big wafting yeah, yeah, flares. Yeah. The loons. Yeah. The loons. Yeah. 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 Big, big, big. <laughs> Well, I had a three-year sort of transition to the, uh, the the hippie hippie scene as well, music and fashion yeah. and everything. But uh, I soon returned to my roots. There you go, his <laughs> <laughs> roots. Yeah, I can see your roots. So there you go. Hey, <laughs> people in glass so now, houses. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, all the hands up. Uh, now your your show. Let's just talk about the show again on uh, Saturdays. Yeah. Uh, how do you prepare for the show? How do you prepare to get the music for the show? Um, well, I, I do a playlist uh, mm -hmm. at home, and you know, I, I look at what I've uh, played before. There's so many tunes you don't have to repeat you yeah. know I, the only time I'll repeat is if I get a request you know right. um, I always start off with two northern soul stompers you know sure. to get people in the mood and then yeah. I might play a few tracks from Chicago mm. um, a few crossover tracks and mm. I, I put a bit of modern soul in as yeah. well but modern soul for those people that don't know on the northern soul scene mm. is anything from about 1973 right so that's 40 yeah. years yeah. old <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the passion that you've got for this music is obvious and and uh, I can understand why, and uh, I hopefully, hopefully, you're going to be turning more people on to it, and yeah, uh, they'll, I, they'll get a lot of pleasure out of it. I, I, That's what I, it's all about, isn't it? I would, I would love more people from the patio itself to turn uh, to tune into the the station. Yeah. Um, I get I get listeners obviously from patio, but from well, Bangkok, um, uh, from the UK, yeah. from Australia. I've got one guy that tunes in every week from Kazakhstan. <laughs> hey. uh, he's, he's working. He's a, a British guy working offshore, but I've got I've got a, a Russian, yeah. Yulia in. Moscow, if you're listening, Yulia. Yeah. Um, so, I know I've got a couple of people in America as well. Excellent. But, um, but I, I would like people in Patia to give it a give it a shot. Yeah. Four o'clock on Saturday afternoon. This old soul of mine. Um, two hours of great music. And uh, it's something a little bit different as well, which is great. You know, it's something a little bit different from what we, we generally play. So that's why it's, I, I love these kind of little specialist shows. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, more power to your elbow, Barry. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Guy. Nice to see you. Cheers, you man. There you go. Thank you, Barry. Uh, we'll uh, listen to your program very soon. Yeah, Thanks, and I should say when you play the Chuck Holiday. Oh track, yeah, we're going to go out with Chuck Holiday. We yeah. have a little boogie round, yeah. Yeah, this was discovered by Mr. Hennigan here in his days as a uh, main DJ at Stafford Top of the World. Oh wow! Um, and it's again rare as hen's teeth, yeah, but a fabulous track. I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. Okay, let's have a listen to that then. Chuck Holiday, and you just can't trust nobody. Oh. 